Hey everyone, this video is the first in a series of building a responsive website from scratch using HTML, SCSS, and JavaScript. I'll be showing you step by step how to build a website from a free design from frontendmentor.io. In this first video, we'll be setting up our project and building out the desktop navigation bar. Sound good? Let's get into it. All right, so the website we're going to be building today is from frontendmentor.io. They have tons of different challenges of website templates you can build yourself. And the one we're building today is called Easy Bank Landing Page. Now, what I'm going to do is download these starter free files. And with that, you just get JPEGs of the design, which you can definitely work off of. But if you want the full sketch file, you have to pay $8.99. So either way works. We're going to be working with the free files right now. So let's set up our project. On the left, I have my empty project folder. And then on the right, we have the files that we downloaded from Frontend Mentor. In this folder, we have an index.html file, which we do want to carry over here to our project. There's also an images folder, and these contain the SVGs and PNGs and JPEGs that we need to use for this website. So we're going to copy the images folder over as well. And there's also a style guide file, which I think would be pretty handy. And then lastly, the design folder contains the JPEGs of the different designs. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I've made an Adobe XD file and in that I've basically copied and pasted all the JPEGs so that I have all the designs in one place. It just makes things a little bit easier. So now that we have our files in our project, let's open up VS code. Okay. So here in VS code, I have the project folder open. You can see that we have the index.html file from Frontend Mentor, and we also have the style guide file, which is helpful to tell you, you know, what widths the design's at, as well as some colors and um, font information. So we'll definitely be using those. And we have the images folder here with all the images. Okay, so when I'm working with website projects, usually I'm going to be using SAS, SCSS syntax, and we're going to have to also have some JavaScript. So let's create those files now. So in the project root, I'm going to create a folder called app. And in that folder, I'm going to create two subfolders, one for JS for the JavaScript file, and then one for SCSS for our SAS files. So in the SAS file folder, um, in the SAS folder rather, let's create our main SAS file, style.scss. And this is going to be the main SAS file that we're going to import all of our partial SAS files into. And we're going to create one called globals. SCSS. Yeah, that's right. I also usually create one called variables because I like using SAS variables a lot. So let's import those into our main SAS file. Import variables because we want our variables to come first so the other SAS files can use them. Then import globals. Okay. So let's start adding some boilerplate styles here. So the globals, the first one I usually do is in the HTML selector, I'm going to say font size is 100%. This is more accessible, lets the user control the zoom level in their browser. We're also going to do box sizing, border box. And what this property does is it makes the size of elements sort of include padding in the final width. So it's just a bit easier when you're working with elements like that. Then we also want to inherit that box sizing border box to all elements. So using the wildcard selector here, as well as the before pseudo element, and the after pseudo element selector. And they're going to inherit the box sizing border box in the HTML element. Now for the body element, let's add some sort of resets here. So we'll say margin zero, padding zero. I also like to do a line height of 1.3, just to add some spacing between lines. And we're going to add our fonts in as well. If you look in the style guide, it said that the font that we're using is Public Sans. I'm going to go to our browser here, copy this in. I think it wanted to use 300 light and then 400 regular. So we'll select both of those and we're going to embed it. We'll just copy this link tag here and put it in our index.html over here above the title. Now, since we're in the index.html file, let's also add a link tag for our CSS file. I'm going to create a dist folder and I want to put all my final CSS files in there. So I'm going to say dist style.css. Uh, 
And then we also, I think, want to add a script um, to load our JavaScript file. That one's just going to be in the app folder. So app.js, script.js. So let's go into our folder here and create that. Script.js, then we'll just add some test code so we can test it. Hello world, why not? Now that we have some SAS files, you know, just basic styles added, let's also test out our SAS workflow. To compile my SAS to CSS, I like to use this extension called Live SAS Compiler. So if you don't have this installed yet, you can just type in Live SAS Compiler in the extensions marketplace and click this button to install it. You might need to restart VS Code if you're installing it for the first time now. But once you have that set up, when you open a project file, you should see some buttons in the bottom. One says watch SAS and the other one says go live. So if we click that watch SAS button, going to watch our SAS files. And then if you want to go live, we click the go live button and it should load the local website in our browser. And you can see that that is indeed the case. Obviously this doesn't look too fancy since, you know, we just added the text from the design here, but we can also check down in the console window here and our hello world message is loading. So it looks like everything's working correctly. See, we need to add that font to our code. So in our globals, we're going to say font family and let's do that before line height. Font family, I believe it was called public sans. So we're just going to copy this over. There we go. Okay. So let's check our browser again and we don't need this anymore. So it looks like we have the font public sans successfully imported. So now going back to our VS code, what we want to do is we want to basically start creating the markup for our website. So let's go into our index.html file and we're going to start writing markup over here. I'm just going to actually comment out all the copy from the design, just so we don't have this extra stuff, you know, visible on the website. We're going to start writing our markup. So let's go back to our design. And what I'm going to do is try to do the mobile first approach. And we're going to make our default styles without media queries, the mobile styles, and we're going to build the mobile website first. And what I usually do is I'll go from the top down. So let's start with the header. So taking a look at the header, it has a logo on the left and it has a hamburger button on the right, which then when you open it, opens this mobile menu. And if we compare that to what we have for the desktop design, it also has a logo on the left that has some links looks like in the middle. And then there's a CTA button on the right side. So let's create the markup and styles for this header in our body tag. We're going to create a header. And then in that header, we want to add our logo image. And we're also going to assume that this is going to link to the homepage. So we'll just make that open that. And then in this anchor tag, we want to add our image for the logo. So image source images, and then we want to look for this logo SVG, then alt, oops, alt, we'll call that easy bank since that's the name of the site we're making. Let's see if that loaded on our site. Okay. So that was easy, right? <laughs> I think actually what I want to do in addition to that is create a nav and I'm going to put everything in that navigation in this nav tag. What we got is the logo and then we have our hamburger menu on the right. So that's probably also going to be an anchor link. It's just going to go to the same page and we want to create um, a hamburger menu and the hamburger menu is those three lines. So let's create three spans. So we're going to use an Emmet shortcut span times three. So three empty spans. And we also probably need a class for this. And we're just going to call this hamburger for the hamburger menu. And in the same way, maybe we can create a class up here for the logo. So we'll say class equals logo. If we look back at the design, we can see that everything is in one line. So that tells me that this nav element should probably be a flexbox parent to put everything on the same line. Now, one other thing I like to do is I like to use a lot of helper classes. So instead of having to write display flex on every single element in this web page that is a flexbox parent, we're going to create a helper class called flex. 
and I'm gonna add that in our globals. Add that it there. So flex box styles. We'll say flex class, and we're going to say display flex. And let's add a few other flex related classes. So flex um, one property we use a lot is justify content. So let's say JC dash space between. And that will be justify content space between because that is used quite often. You can also maybe create one for center. And I'm just going to basically be creating these as, you know, as we need them. So let's also create some um, align content properties. So align content, and usually it's align content center. So we'll write that align content, or I'm sorry, align items rather, center. So it's a I center. Okay, so this is fine for now. We're probably going to use more later. But now what we've done is in my SAS, I've created a flex class for display flex and then these other ones for the flex properties. So what I can do now is, uh, let's see, split this up. So you can see our HTML on the left and our styles on the right. What I'm going to do is in the nav, in, in addition to the flex class, we also want a flex justify content space between. So let's just check out how it looks in the browser. Okay, so you can see our logo here. Let's see what's going on. So we can see the nav here. So we have a logo and then we have the hamburger class, but it looks like that has a zero width and box model. So yeah, it looks like it has a no width, but there is a height. So what we probably need to do is make those spans. Spans by nature are, are display inline. So that means they're not going to take up any space if there's like no content in them. So what we want to do is we want to add some styles now for our header. So we're going to go back to our SAS folder, create a new SAS file. We're going to call this header.scss. And then we want to make sure that we are importing that into our main SAS file. So just trying to keep things organized here. Header. So now in our header, what we want to do is I think I'm going to add another class for the header. Let's say class header. And this is so I can use BEM block element modifier for writing my SAS classes. So first we have this main element header. And then in here, we're going to say maybe header underscore underscore logo. And then header underscore underscore menu, maybe hamburger menu. Okay, so now in our SAS files, we can start using the ampersand for header. Then there's a logo. And then another one for the menu. This is the mobile menu. So we'll just add a little comment here saying that mobile menu. And we also have an image tag here. So I'm not sure if we're going to need this, but we'll just add it here anyway. So in the menu, we have some span elements. I'm just going to use the direct child selector here to make sure we keep things as specific as possible. And we're going to say display block for these spans. Now, if we go back to the design, the hamburger menu is looks like a bunch of dark black or very dark gray lines. So we're going to start with some general styles here. First thing was first, actually, we probably want to get our colors added in from the style guide. So we can see here, these are all the different colors. They're using HSL instead of hex, but that's totally fine. So let's start adding variables for our colors so we can reuse them. So dark blue. So now we're probably going to use this dark blue color for the hamburger menu, and we'll just kind of see how that looks. So let's close our script file here. We don't really need that right now. So going back to our header SAS file, we want those lines to be that dark blue color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say width and the width of those hamburger lines are... Now, since this is a JPEG, this is kind of the only way that we can really see how big things are. I'm creating a little rectangle here that's semi-transparent, so you can still see through it but you can still move it around and you can kind of use it to see how big things are. Pretty small. Looks like it's about a 26 and then about 12 or 13 height. Okay. So what I want to do is here, I'm going to set this to, I think it was 26 pixels. 
and then the height of each this is just for each line so let's say two pixels oh yeah and then the background color background color and we'll use the dark blue variable all right let's see how that looks in our website now okay so <laughs> this is a little small up here but we do have our hamburger lines here but we need to add some spaces between the lines so what i'm going to do is i want to add a margin bottom to all the spans except the last one so what we can do is we can use the not selector so not last child and then if it's not the last child we'll say margin bottom and let's just kind of guess here maybe three pixels so going back to our website we can see now that we do have the three lines and our logo now of course everything's up right on the edge here so we need to add some padding here so let's see how much padding there is let's get the top and bottom padding first and i'm going to kind of assume that the top and bottom padding are the same if we get a little rectangle here about 22 inches or pixels rather and if we move it down it might be a little bit more so maybe 24. so 24 pixels of padding on top and bottom and then for left and right about the same let's just say 24 all around so going back into our code what we can do is we want to add padding to the nav itself so in the header uh, we're going to add another selector here for the nav just no class at least for now so we'll say padding uh, 24 pixels all around okay so let's see how that looks all right oh why is that so tall let's see what's going on here so we have the nav here that's 24 pixels all around it looks like we need to center things vertically so what i didn't do was i need to add another flex property here so flex just to show you what i got here flex ai dash c that's going to align items to center all right so that looks a bit more centered there we go okay so we got our nav we got our spacing one thing we do want to do is see what the differences are between the mobile and then the desktop nav mobile obviously has the hamburger uh, menu does not have these links or the cta so these are desktop only but i should be able to use these same markup for both mobile and desktop so let's add some elements in for the links as well as the cta okay so let's scoot this over here a bit so logos first for both and then for the mobile the menu is over here now since the, the hamburger is not going to be visible on desktop i'm just going to add these other elements down here so the first one we want to do is since i'm using flexbox to separate them out let's create a new element we'll just say div and we'll say header underscore underscore links and in here we'll say anchor um link so i think there were how many links five link times five there we go and i think the text is down here so we can just kind of move those up into here into the links so header links and you know this is just a landing page we're doing so we're just going to make all the links the pound sign or the hashtag so going back to our header sas file we're probably going to have to add some styles for that so under the menu we'll say header underscore underscore links and then in that is going to be some anchor links let's go back to our website and now we can see that we have our links okay first things we want to get rid of that underline and i want that to be true for all links on the page so we're going to add some styles here for just default styles so links a visited a hover um, text decoration none okay good now let's style those links let's see what we got here check our notes in the style guide okay it says font size is 18 pixels i guess we could add that font size to the body tag so 18 pixels and it's actually better to use relative units like rems instead of pixels so to get from pixels to rems you can divide 18 by 16. so if we check this inspect element let's see yep font size is 1.125 rems and if you click on the computer tab it'll tell you it's 18 pixels which is what we want 
Okay, color seems to be, this actually seems smaller, so this might be like maybe 16 or even 14. Let's find out. It's about 14, so we're going to adjust the font size in the um, header. Font size, I think we said 14, so 14 pixels divided by 16 is 0.875. Um, another thing you can actually do, and let's do that now, is we're going to create some variables for these font sizes, just in case we need to reuse them. So we'll say body, or maybe font um, medium, the 18 pixels or font size 1.125 rems. And then we'll replace this with the variable name. And the other one was font small. This is going to be 14 pixels. There we go. Take that over here. Then we'll replace that with the font small variable. Kind of helps just to add some comments so you can remember what this is. 18 pixels. We'll add more variables as we need, but for now, Let's also check out the colors. Probably that lighter gray for the text here. So I think I can actually, I might just add it to the body selector since it seems like most of the body text is that gray color. So let's add that in the global one as well. This just makes it so that you don't have to add, you know, font size and color for every different element. You can just add it globally first to the body for whatever, you know, the most often used one is. And then you can make them different for the elements that need that. Let's check out this website. Where's the color coming from? It looks almost purple, not gray. There should be another color, hopefully. Uh, it's probably this light grayish blue, so we'll just replace that. There we go. I wonder if this is from the link color. Change to red. Yeah, it's not taking for some reason. I think it's probably taking the default color from the browser, so... What I want to do is we'll just add that color property there. Okay, that's a little bit too, that's a little bit too light. So we're just going to go back to the grayish blue and the same for here. There we go. Okay, that looks more like it. So now we have the links added. We want to add that CTA button that's just for desktop. So let's we'll move this over here because we're going to need that pretty soon. This is going to be probably a button element. So we'll say button type equals button. And then what does it say? Request invite. Okay, so now it's a button. Now, of course, we need to style these button styles. So we're going to add the button styles again in our globals. So first thing we want to do is we want to kind of reset the colors and different styles. So this one is a gradient background and it has rounded corners. What we probably want to do is figure out what the size of the button is. So we can do that by, I'm just going to add padding to the sides. So it's about 16 padding on top, about the same on the bottom. And then, oops, for the left and right, it's about, let's just say 30. So we'll say 16 padding on top and bottom, and then 30 on left and right. So we're going to use the button element as well as the button class just in case because sometimes we might want to have an anchor link that has the button class as well. Padding 16 on top, so that's one rem, and then 30, which would be 30 divided by 16, 1.875 rems. Okay, and then also around a corner, so border, radius, um, I'm not sure. We'll just say 50 pixels for now. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, getting there. We also probably want to make it use the cursor when you hover over it. There we go. So now it looks like it's a link. Looking back at the design, this is a gradient. It looks like it's a linear gradient, just going from left to right. So going from this green color to this kind of teal blue-green color. Let's see which colors we're going to be using. It's probably lime green going to bright cyan. So. Let's add it, I like adding the background here. Background, linear gradient, and it's going to go lime green to bright cyan. Okay, so it's horizontally, so we want to make it go kind of vertical. So I think it is to right, 
I'm not positive that's the correct syntax, and it looks like it's not. CSS linear gradient. This is what I do quite a bit when I'm building websites. So we can go to, let's, let's check out MDN. Okay, two left comma, so I need to add a comma there. And let's go back to our website. Oh, still didn't work. What's going on here? Maybe I'm not using the right property. Background linear gradient to left. Let's kind of inspect this in the thing itself. Linear gradient, that's right. To dash right. No, there's no dash, that's why. Let's just test this and make sure. I think I need to edit it in the code itself. There we go. Oh yeah. I think we need to get rid of that border. So in buttons, we're going to say border zero. Okay, so now that's gone, which is good. And then we want the color to be white. Nice. And let's see how that matches. Looks like it might be bold, actually. Font weight, we'll say 700 for bold. Although it said it was, let's check our notes again. Weights 300 and 400. Go back to the design here. So I'm guessing the default weight is the 300 for light and then the normal is sort of the headline stuff. So let's kind of go back into our body. Font weight, we want the default weight to be 300. And then for the link, we'll say the weight is 400 since it is a little bit heavier. Is that taking? <laughs> um, font weight 300, which is good. Check this out. Font weight is 400. It doesn't look any different. Weird. Okay, I think this might be because it is a button element. Um, if we do font weight 300, font weight 400, it doesn't seem to change at all changes to an anchor link. Yeah, it is changing a bit. So this might just be a bug for the button element. Maybe we'll just change that button to an actual anchor link. Because it could be an anchor link in real life. It really just depends on what you want to do. Add a class and we'll say class of button. Now we know that this should inherit all these styles here. So let's check this again. Okay, it's so like the weight is correct. Pretty big, I think, and the design it looks like it was the same size. So let's go back to header. This is maybe header underscore underscore CTA. So font size, we'll just make this also font small. And color, we'll make this white. Uh, why is this gray? <laughs> oh my gosh, nothing's working. What? Color red? Important. Oh, maybe it's because it's the anchor link. Oh, okay. Probably because... Oh yeah, I did this color grayish blue. I might actually just get rid of this thing here. And instead, add it to the anchor links. Because it's a bit more specific, because I don't want every single link to necessarily be that grayish blue color. There we go. So that looks pretty good. All the links are there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to either hide or show the different navigation elements depending on if they're needed on the mobile design and then the desktop design. So how we're going to control that is another set of helper classes. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated because first I need to create the classes. We'll just call this visibility. So hide for mobile. I'm including tablet with this mobile class. So in this what we want to do is hide for tablet and mobile devices. And we'll create another one, hide for desktop. Hide for desktop widths, um, viewport widths. So the way we're going to target this is we need to create a media query. But what I'm going to do is create a mixin so we can make things a bit more reusable. Let's create a new SAS file called mixins. And this one's going to be related to breakpoints. The final code that we want to have is something like media, and then the target will be min width 1024 pixels for desktop. 1024 divided by 16, 64. And for uh, media query, you want to use EMs. They've just been shown to be the most consistent among browsers. And then we have our styles go here. This is what we want to output, but we want to save 
these breakpoints so we don't have to keep typing them every time, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a SAS map. We're going to call this breakpoints up and then we're going to basically create a bunch of different values. For breakpoints up, meaning at this point and bigger, use these styles. So to do that, we're going to first create one for medium because we're assuming the small size is the default one. 640 pixels divided by 16 is 40 EMs. 40 EMs. I'll create another one for large and let's say that one's going to be 1024 pixels divided by 16 is 64. And we'll create another one for extra large since we have a lot of large screens these days. 1400 divided by 16, so 87.5. EMs. So now this is our SAS map for breakpoints up, but I'm also going to create one for breakpoints down. The first one breakpoints up is if you want to target this viewport and up. And that's what I use for most of my styles, but there are some cases where you want to target a style from a certain viewport and on down. So for that, we're going to not use the X large because X large on down is basically everything, but we are going to add a small here for mobile devices. For mobile, we're going to take this value here because medium would be 40 EMs and on and on up. For small, we're going to say 40 EMs and down. And we'll move this up here for medium on down. So this is anything smaller than 1024. And then 87.5 EMs. Oops, I need to leave that there. We don't want to overlap these, so I'm just going to make these one pixel smaller. The breakpoints we're using are 640 pixels, 1024 pixels, and I think I said 1400 pixels. That's for the breakpoints up. So for these, we want it to be 640 and up, so 639 and down. This is so we don't have any overlapping styles. I try to not mix breakpoints up and breakpoints down in the same style rule. It's either one or the other, usually going to be breakpoints up. We need to recalculate these numbers here. This is going to be 639 divided by 16, 39.9375.9375. And then 1023 divided by 16, 63.9375. And the last one's going to be 1399. 87.4375. There we go. Now that we have our two maps, what we can do now is create our mixin. So we're going to say mixin breakpoint up. It's going to take a parameter. We'll just call it size. We're going to write what we want the, the mixin to output. So we want it to output a media query. So media and then min width. And this is where we're going to put in this size variable. I'm sorry, this is not right. So the min width is going to be the 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 value for that size that we've determined. So to get that, we need to use map-get. So you can see this code has some helper text here. It turns value into map associated with the given key. So map-get. And the map we're using is going to be for the first one, break points up. We also want to grab that size parameter. So the size is going to be either small, medium, large, x large, and it'll return this EMs number. When we're using this mixin, we want to Write this media query, and then in the media query, we're going to just output whatever content is in the style. And I'll show you how that works in a second. We got our mixin written for breakpoint up, and let's create another one for breakpoint down. Uh, everything's going to be pretty much the same, except we're using the down, and then also instead of min width, is going to be max width, and then the content. So going into our global styles again. The hide for mobile class, we want to hide for medium and down. So we're going to call the mixin by using include, and we want to do breakpoint down. And the size we're going to call is going to be the medium, because for medium and down, we want to say display none. And then in a similar way, for the desktop, we want to call a mixin, but the one mixin we're going to use is going to be breakpoint up because we want to hide the element using this class for desktop and up. So that would be large and extra large. Display none. Okay, now let's see if this works by adding these classes to the different elements in the header. 
So for mobile, we want to hide those links as well as that CTA. So let's add the class here. And then for desktop, we want to hide the hamburger menu since we don't need that for desktop. And we're going to keep the logo because that's going to be used for both. Okay, so now moment of truth. Let's see how this works. Looks like something's not really working, but let's see. Yeah, this is when we debug our code. So hide for mobile, hide for desktop. Interesting. Looks like there's no errors. So what we want to do is maybe check out the final CSS file. There we go. Let's see if we can find that class. Oh, looks like we didn't even didn't even get pulled in for some reason. That's weird. Oh wait, there's a error here. No mix in named breakpoint down. Okay, let's go back and start from the beginning. Oh, we didn't add the mixins SAS file. So let's let's do that. That seems pretty important. Now we go. Okay, now there's a success message. Go back to our site. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? Okay, so it does look like things are hiding and showing. So let's see when when does this switch? For 1024 and up, it's showing the links and the button, and then yeah, so hide for desktop display none or the the hamburger menu. And then here, there's no styles here, but as soon as we get shorter, we use the hide for mobile. So at 1024 is when everything either gets hidden or shown. So this looks like it is working. Let's look at the design again and just make sure we have all the styles correctly. We need some more space between these links here. So let's see how much space we need to add. It's about maybe 32 pixels. So going to our header SAS file, header links, A. What we're going to do is we're going to add a margin to the right of the link, but we don't want to add a right margin to the last link because there's nothing after that. So we're going to use a not selector and then not last child. So as long as it's not the last child, margin right is going to be, what do we say? 32 pixels. All right, so now let's make sure there's no margin added to that last link. Contact blog. Oh, why is there white space here? And then careers does not have it. So the white space is probably added because of the enter key. <laughs> Um, there we go. Okay, now there's no white space. That's weird. Let's go back here, check one more time. Let's check this button styles again. 152 by 50. Seems a little bit big to me. I feel like some of the padding may, might not be quite accurate. Here is our div. 163 by 44. And let's kind of guess what this font size is. It's probably 14, which I think it should be correct. Let's double check the font first and then we'll adjust the padding to match. So if we go to computed and see that the font size is 14. So that's right. So we're just going to adjust the padding here. The padding right now is 16 on the top and bottom. It's 50 pixels tall right now and it should be 46. So we need to um, subtract four pixels. So two pixels from the top and bottom. So let's go back to our button styles. And here's the padding. So one rem, which is 16 pixels, but we want to subtract that and make it 14. Um, 14 divided by 16, 0 0.875 rem. <laughs> there you go. So now it's 46, which is pretty good. And then it should be 163 and it's only 152. So it's about 10. So we'll add five more to each to the left and the right. Right now it is 30. So we want it to be 35 on each. So 35 divided by 16 is 2.1875, 2.1875. Okay, so that looks a bit more like the design, 162 by 46, which looks much closer. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's actually double check this logo size as well for both mobile and desktop. It looks like they're the same size for both, but let's just make sure. So it's about 141 by 22, if it's the same for mobile. Yeah, it's the same. Let's see what the actual logo is here. 139 by 20, and it should be 141 by 22. So let's see where this gets set. I think it's in the header. Oh, we didn't even set the size. 
Okay, so it needs to be 141 by 22. So 141 divided by 16, 8.8125. And then height should be 22, 1.375. Okay, let's see if that helps at all. Alrighty. So 141 by 22, 141 by 22. All right, this is pretty good. So we got our mobile styles here for the hamburger menu. As we get bigger, we got the desktop styles. So let's check out the active states for desktop. We go over here. It's like the text gets darker and uh oh, we have this border here. And then for the button, it looks like it gets sort of like whited out a little bit. Yeah, it looks like that. So first let's tackle the that bottom border and the color for the text. So the header links, what I'm going to do is for the hover pseudo selector we want the color to be the darker gray so it was grayish blue here so it's probably gonna be this dark blue color here let's double check on that nice and to make it a little bit nicer we can add a transition so transition for the color and the timing for that let's just say maybe 200 milliseconds and then i like to do ease in out for most transitions there you go. So you can see it's a little, you know, just a little bit nicer. Let's figure out how to do that bottom gradient. So the problem is here right now, these elements are just the width or the height of the text itself. So what I will need to do is I need to add some either margin or padding for the top and or bottom to make it the height of the probably the entire thing because we're centering everything, remember? So where's my little rectangle? Where'd it go? I left it over here. Oh, there's another one down there. Take this one. We'll take this one in case we need it later. Make it bigger so we can see it. Well, let's take that over here and then see how tall this thing needs to be. Looks like the header itself is about probably 80 pixels tall is what we would guess. And then the little border thing is about five pixels tall. Let's go back to our site, add some border so we can see what we're doing here. I can see that this has a border. This is actually a little bit tall as well. And it really should be 80 pixels tall. It's probably the padding. The header has no padding. The nav has padding here. 24 pixels of padding. So let's try. And we should probably convert that to rems as well. So if the total height's gonna be 80, we can take this down. So 17 pixels and 24 pixels for header nav padding. And then if we want to convert that to REMS, 1.0625. And then 24, 1.5. Okay, so now it is 80 pixels tall, which is pretty much about what we wanted. Let's see if we can do it with a pseudo element. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. But let's just say for this one, um, header links A, and the new set of styles here. Header links A, B4. So content needs to be an empty string. So let's try position absolute, width of 100%, display block. Then we'll make it a height of five pixels, and then background of, let's just say, you know, the lime green color. So the pseudo element's going all the way across, which we don't want it to do. I thought this position relative would work. Let's try adding it here. Okay, there we go. Maybe we'll try to align it to the zero. Left of zero, right of zero. So instead of width, we're just saying left and right. So now each link has a little line, which is what we want, but it doesn't seem like it's in the right place. And I think it's because we want to adjust it so that it's right up to the header. So now we want this green line to be down where the blue line is. So let's see if we can do that. We might actually just need to add a static. Let me think about this. What we could do is say bottom zero, 
negative, statically set it to 30. That might actually be the easiest one, so let's do that. Okay, so before we forget, let's copy these styles. So header links A, I'm going to say position relative. And then header links A, let's add this here. So before, I'm going to be content empty. And then let's just kind of copy those other styles that we'd added here. Okay, so now, if this actually worked. Oops, what did I do? What did I do? Looks like I set position relative. Hmm, what did I do? Oh, I didn't add position absolute. There we go. There we go. I think what was happening before was position relative. I think it just made them stack for some reason. It makes every element a display block, which takes up 100% width, and then it's in the flow of the document. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, so here we got our lines. Now what we want to do is make the colors correct, first of all, and then we're going to only show the line when you're hovering. So if we look over here, it looks like, it looks like it has the same green actually as the button. It goes from lime green to blue. So let's go back to our button styles. So here's the linear gradient. I wonder if we're reusing this gradient again in this website. So it's using the buttons, which is already taken care of. This I'm assuming are just icons. So this is just green. So I think we'll be okay just leaving the styles like this, and then we can just copy it. If, it. if it was used multiple times, I might create like a helper class for that, but let's just leave it like this for now. So, and then we also only want that to appear on hover. So when you hover on the element itself, the pseudo element will get this background. That's cool. Now we need to figure out a way to make this more transitioned because it's a little bit, you know, kind of jarring. It just like suddenly pops up as opposed to the color of the text like itself. What we can do is, unfortunately, you cannot make the background itself. You can't make the background itself transition. It just doesn't work that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the background back in the pseudo element by default, but we're going to make opacity zero. And then when it's hovered, we'll change the opacity to one. And then we can add the transition here. Opacity 300 milliseconds ease in. It'll be the same. Oh wait, 200 milliseconds. Okay. So now let's get rid of that border too. <laughs> Don't need that. Let's see what this looks like. Now you can see it is fading in and out pretty nicely. I make it a little bit slower. Let's make them 300 for both. Okay, so now it's a pretty nice little transition here. Okay, so I think these text links are good. Let's move on to the Hover state for that button. Let's look at the design one more time. It looks like it just kind of fades to white. So I wonder if we can just make this adjust the opacity. Let's see what this looks like. Opacity, let's try 0 0.75. See what that switches look. That's pretty good. Okay, so button header CTA. In the header, let's find the CTA. And then we're going to add a transition for the opacity again. And we'll do the same thing, 300 milliseconds. Oops. Ease in, out. Now on hover, um, we'll say opacity is zero. Okay, so let's see how that looks now. Whoa. Oh, doesn't want to be zero, 0 0.75, I think I said. <laughs> that wouldn't be very good user experience. Looks pretty good. We got these going. Let's just kind of check back and make sure everything looks good. All right. So that's the desktop navigation. 
In the next video, we'll be building out the mobile navigation and off canvas hamburger menu. If this video helped you at all, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to help support this channel. And if you have any questions, you can always leave them down below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on coding.